Hey guys, Peter Jordan, and today we're going to tie one of my favorite little patterns for fishing for uh, spotted bass and red eye bass in Alabama's waterways. And what we're going to start on is a Helgramite pattern that I call the Heavy Helga. It's a really simple fly, it's really easy to tie, and it's inexpensive. And what I looked for in this pattern was a fly that I could roll across the bottom, that could get bumped around, that if I lost a few of them in a day, it wasn't a huge deal because I found out that if I if I had this fly to where it could just kind of bounce along on the bottom and didn't have a weed guard, it increased my hookup. So let's take a look at it real quick. This is the heavy algo. You've only got four materials in the fly. You've got a little bit of monofilament, your tail, your chenille, silly legs, and of course your eye. But the thing about it is, it's meant to be a good fly, a good profile fly, that's easy to cast, bumps around on the bottom, and if you lose a few of them in a day, it's not a big deal. But I think it's definitely a fly that can catch you a lot more fish than you anticipated. Alright guys, today we're going to start off with a Gamakatsu B10S size 2 stinger hook. And from there we're going to use clear thread. As a lot of you guys know, I use the old Coates and Clark thread you can get from Walmart and the reason I use it is it's plenty strong it is clear and it is cheap so that being said all in all it's a favorite cocktail for wonderfulness so I've got that on there all right let's trim off our tag in Boom. all right next thing we're gonna add is going to be some large pseudo eyes you can use any color you like. Today we're going to use green because we're going to tie the fly in black. So, here's our eyes. And just like with any pattern you have weighted that you have eyes on, it's always a good idea to give yourself a little thread bump. It just makes it easier to tie down the eyes. Okay, I'm going to give myself a little bit of space from the eye of the hook so that if I ever want to add a weed guard, I can. It's not a must to add a weed guard, it's a if it's a, if you want to. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Alright. Roll around, let's tighten it up. Check it. And a couple more. Couple more, couple more, couple more, couple more. Come around the other way. Couple more, couple more, couple more, couple more. And choo, 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 done. Now, to make sure this stays where we have it, we're going to take a little bit of Zappa Gap. You can use Loon, Zappa Gap, Super Glue, whatever. This is about the only place that I use Zappa Gap because I don't want my eyes going anywhere. And when I'm fishing, I don't want to have to worry about it. I just want it to work. All right, next thing's next. We're going to use some black zonker strip rabbit. Uh, let's see. And I'm going to take off a section about a little bit longer than the length of the hook shank. Boom. And then from there, we're going to tie this on right by the bend of the hook. And we're going to do it fur facing down because this fly is going to ride hook up. Nice and tight. Very nice. Alright. Next thing, we're going to add some ultra chenille. All right, we're going to use plain old everyday black ultra chenille. You can use any size you want and you could sub this out for dubbing if you wanted to. Alright and we got a nice long piece of chenille. It's pretty daggum long. And what we are wanting to do with that is lay 
this back. On here, and I'm going to tie in this, and I want this to go forward like this, okay? Alright, come up a little ways. And I'm going to come all the way forward with it, like so. I'm not really too worried about it. And then I'm going to come back again all right now I'm doing this for two reasons one and the biggest one is to add bulk we want a fairly wide bodied fly I love it the other reason is it's easier all right now next thing we're going to add is going to be some saddle hackle okay so I'm going to tie this in tip first. Mm -hmm. You can skip this step if you want to. It is one of the less important steps. You don't have to tie in the saddle hackle. Does it make that much of a difference? I doubt it pretty severely, but I like it because to me I think it, it helps the fly to breathe in the water. And the reason we tied it in tip first is so that by the time we get to the end of the fly, it's going to flare up at the at the collar up here and what that does is kind of like the gills on a helgamite now I'm going to take some black silicone skirting like you might use on a jig cut it in half here and then I'm going to come to the back and then I'm going to double it over over my fly tying thread just like so thing again. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to trim it off at the end. Right. There we are. Lovely. Same thing again. Okay. Two or three wraps all it takes. We're going to come up a little bit. About halfway up the hook. We're going to take and stop. Now, <clears throat> from here we're going to take that doubled over piece of chenille. What we want to make sure we're doing is we don't want to wrap up the silicone jig skirt pieces. We're going to wrap over. All right. It's only going to take about one wrap behind the legs. Then, like I said this is the toughest part, just making sure you don't wrap over it. And I'm sure we will. Just pull it out, straighten it. It's not a big deal boom they come up forward like that and when we come up forward like that that's going to keep everybody where we want it then we're going to come over again when we get to this point right here easiest thing to do is take some hackle pliers I'm just going to clamp it right here in the bend it's just going to be just enough weight to hold it where we want it all right i'm going to do the same thing again with that skirt piece of skirt just going to take it and I'm going to cut it in half again. Boom. Done to it. Pull this down. I'm keep my hackle out of the way. Just pull it towards the back. Get it in order. Get, get it. Get it. Alright, there we are. Separate down the middle. And tie it in. Very nice. All right. All right. Only takes a couple wraps. And just remember, guys, 
your fish are going to tear these off. You can use heavier rubber legs if you like. It'll make them last longer. Uh, ordinary jig, silicone legs are fine. Um, my thought is this. I don't tie this with a weed guard generally. You can. Um, so, for me personally, I'm going to end up losing this in the rocks in the bottom before I'm really worried about losing the uh, silicone legs. Boom. Oh, sorry guys, didn't mean to bump the camera there. Alright. legs. There we are. More again. I'm going to get about one more wrap. Just to make this easy, I'm going to come back up here. And we're going to do the same thing. They're screwed again. I'm gonna do this behind the camera because it's a little bit easier and work a little bit faster. All right, lovely. Perfect. All right, same thing again. <coughs> um. Come on up to the other hook. And we're going to come in between the eye, in between the, the eyes, and oh, oh there it went. <laughs> Very nice. Now, one thing we're going to do at this point is I am going to take this, I'm going to come back, I'm going to tie this off like so. Nice and tight. And I'm going to cut off this end up here. Just one side. Just one side, by the way. Perfect. Alright, I'm going to relieve my hackle pliers of duty. I'm going to come over this way with that. Just like so. I'll come over. And around. Over. So you got a nice head on it. Just keep in mind your Helger mites. They've got a big old melon. Big old crushing mandibles. And we're going to work on that part in a minute. Now, a lot of times when this Helger mites down in the bottom, in the in the, the rocks and the sand and just chilling, he's going to be hanging out and waiting. And the, you know, fish are going to see different parts of him breathing and moving around and this is where our cycle your saddle hackle our cycle our saddle hackle is going to come into take another sip of coffee <clears throat> okay and from here we're going to grab our hackle pliers again get the back side of this thing we're going to kind of just kind of keep it loose. That's why I said you can skip this. It's a, it's a pain in the butt. It's a bother. It's not a necessary part of the fly. I just think it looks cool. And like so many other things in fly time, you know, it doesn't most of the time make a hill of beans of difference to the fish whatsoever. Just kind of be careful. Going around, where are you going? Um, Amy, there we go. Loving it.
front. Wrap it around the collar a couple times. Boom. That's it. I'm going to come back off this. And wrap it around. Yeah, I slipped off the hackle pliers just in time. Totally live with that. Alright, now let's trim off our excess. There we go. Nice little collar to the fly. Lovely. Okay, now. Now for the cool part. Let's flip the fly over. This one we're very pleased with our rotary feature on the peak device. And now, let's get everybody in order. Get everybody out of the way. We're going to take these two tag ends we have. We're going to take them up. And notice I've got it crossed over. I went from this angle. Let me see if you can see it. I went from here where it's at this back corner. And it came to here. Okay. And there's a reason I'm doing it. I promise. Same thing. Alright. Now we're going to come here and let you see it. See that's off to this corner. Pull everybody back. Get everybody out of the way. Alright. And to here. Boom. And then I'm going to tie it off. Here. Very nice. Okay. Pull these tight, like so. And then, at this point, what we're going to do is, we're going to tie it off. We're going to pull these back. Get underneath the eye of the hook. And at this point, you can use a double half hitch, a whip finish, or you can be like Dave Whitlock and you can just use a little bit of Zappa Gap and call it a day. Either one's fine. I am a double half hitch kind of a guy because that's how I roll. I'm going to do one, two, Drop you bobbin. Alright, and two's enough. Once again, pull it off nice and tight. And you can either pull it and just break it that way if you're using thread. It's definitely the way to go. I'm not using thread, so I'll just cut it off. Alright, now, the next step for us is going to be we're going to pull this down. We're going to get our mandibles in order, trim them off. We just need little ones, not a big deal. Now we're going to take our loon UV clear. You'd be clear about this. Alright, and we're going to put it on here. And you could use. <clears throat> You don't have to use loon, you can use clear cure goo. You could probably use like a two minute epoxy if you want to. So whatever. Alright. So now we've got this. I'm gonna take it. Make sure you can see what I'm doing. Alright, so I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna use my finger to push them in so they get kind of a a buggy look and feel. Like that. We're going to cure it. Alright. Probably going to add a little bit more UV. A little bit more goo. It gets, tends to get soaked up by the chenille, which is fun. Can see what I'm doing. Pull this down. Mushing these in like so. Make and release. 
kind of a horseshoe look. One of the things I love about Loon is when I'm curing something, I can still work with it. There we go. There's our mandibles. Now, up here, top side, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take these, and you see how these are crossed over? I'm actually going to take it. I'm going to push these down. What I'm looking for at this point is I want it to widen out the body of the fly. It will be a little bit easier for me to do if I put it down like this. A little bit harder for you guys to see, but a little bit easier for me to do. So, have to forgive me for a minute. I'm going to put my, my, knee my uh, scissors in, spread it, push down, and then and use again some moon. Because I want it to hold its place, and the loon is going to dry clear, so it's got, not going to leave a white residue. Hold it down for just a second. Obviously, if you're tying this at home with me, you can skip this part. Okay, now. See how we broadened out the body of the fly? You know what's there. Not a big deal. I'm gonna come in here. I got, could trim that off if you wanted to. I'm gonna leave it because I don't think it makes any difference. And then, guys, we're going to take <clears throat> my silicone legs and trim them up. I'm going to bring them up to the top, everybody together, and we're going to give them a haircut. Make everybody a nice uniform length. And no, once again, I don't believe this makes any difference to the fish. Boom. And there we are, guys. The heavy Helga. One thing you can do as well is you can put in a piece of mono loop right here to keep this from wrapping if your tail wraps on you. Um, it's going to help somewhat. It's not going to be the be all end all of that. But, uh, yeah. That's it, guys. Very simple fly. If you're doing it on your own at home, it will probably tie much faster. You got just enough breath. And I think she'll do really well for you guys. Hey guys, thanks for watching. And I appreciate y'all sticking with me during this time period. We've been a long time without going with videos. We're going to get back on the horse again and we're going to get moving. Uh, we're going to start with a series of flies that do more of a um, stream set, river set, uh, moving water bass fishing thing. So for this fly, we're going to run with this. Uh, the next fly is going to be the Skulkin Sculpin. And the Skulkin Sculpin is one that I've had in my mind's eye for a pretty long time. Let me grab one real quick, show what I'm talking about.
it's a good bit more involved of a fly pattern. It's got a rattle in the whole nine yards. And it's a big fly. It's a fly that we're wanting to take up a lot of water. But anyway, we'll get into that next time. It's a more involved fly. This is a great fly that we uh, underutilize. I don't think we take advantage of Helgramite patterns enough down here because, uh, let's face it, if you've ever fished on a stream that's got dragonflies, a Helgramite pattern is a great pattern to use. And especially down here at this time of year, the colder parts of the year, when the water is more highly oxygenated, your Helgramites are going to be more active and your bass are going to find them as a more viable food source. So, appreciate you sticking with me. We're going to keep rolling on. Um, and join me next time for the Skulk and Sculpin.